All right, I will just uh, start. It's three o'clock and we have two hours about sustainability, uh, the green uh, sh uh, shift and inclusion uh, with myself, Linnea, uh, Svensson and uh, Sophie. Yeah. So uh, we will uh, still let people enter, of course, but uh, we just want to be on time for those of you who are on time. So. I'm uh, very happy to be here with you. Uh, hi. I know there's more Norwegians in the room, so uh, hello <laughs> for you. I have a Swedish name, uh, but I speak uh, mostly Norwegian, so I'm, I'm a mix. Um, so I would love uh, to hear a bit about your uh, thoughts about this session. What do you want to get out of it? A bit of a check-in. So I am here and I'm happy to give you like all the updates you need on all the different topics in the green sustainability but I really want you to be able to have the time to uh, start thinking about your own plan or discuss the one you already have. So that's kind of my aim to help you in this workshop to kind of put down some milestones on your piece of paper and we even have, if you want to take notes, if you don't have anything to write on, if you don't like to write on your phone or your laptop or don't have, I can send around some papers. Yeah, so you can just uh, send it. Thank you. Here are the ones, uh, experience with the, uh, giving out the uh, notes. So anyone want to share something about their Thoughts, yes? Uh, I am uh, a Norwegian. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, you know that Norwegians don't give a shit about uh, the environment. Okay. Uh, so, so everybody needs to be quiet because somebody's speaking. Hello. <laughs> so one more time. Yeah. Uh, Expectations for this session. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to, to get, I mean, arguments, tools, things that I can use to convince people in, in my organization that we should, should uh, have, have uh, um, environmental sustainability in, in our minds when, when planning events. Yeah, good. There are some notes, some notes. Good. Any other thoughts about what you want to get out of this? Well, maybe it's more complicated, but uh, how to understand the green in music, not as a project, but as a process. Yeah. Uh, with a very long perspective, because we can find some tricks or some you know, like tips how to do the project. Yeah. But there are uh, also uh, milestones. Yeah. Uh, maybe there's some, and so from nice. what they are come from, maybe there is some legal documents which uh, are at the, the top, and uh, they have some very special sentences. Mm -hmm. What we should do and why, mm -hmm. you know, because when we will write some, maybe some project to start the process, we can use those documents or, or to, to, to show there is a special statement. Yeah, so, so I, will, I, will, I have this. I got you covered. So first of all, I'm going to give you a bit of a context and we will discuss some central focus areas. And some of these we might go through a bit quick because I want you to start thinking on your own with the process. We will work uh, with the process mindset in, in place and then I will share some arguments with you uh, because I also do, I'm based in Norway, I work with the Nordics but also the European Festival Organization Europe uh, which organizes festivals like Oya, Roskilde, uh, Glastonbury and so on. And uh, we have several different roadmaps for cultural institutions in the Nordics and for European festivals so I will show them with you. But I also work with the Norwegian Sporting Association, which might have the same voluntary uh, mindset as you will experience in the choir associations. So uh, we are launching some tools there that probably will have um, more interest for, for those of you from Norway. I see there are a couple. All right. And I want you to start planning and working on your own process and I will share a bit about what you already have in your own association. So I already shared this with, um, in a panel where Sonia also was attending and because I wasn't prepared because I 
uh, sometimes start using this. Um, um, I don't know if you remember, Sonia. I was uh, uh, when we the last time we met. I uh, had this uh, statement. It's uh, it's from a Stevie Wonder song, and there was this man starting singing the the quote in a cappella, and I was a bit shocked because I'm you know. My background is from rock festivals. We don't sing <laughs> like this, so but it was very. So I just took it as an as a common memory. If somebody wants to sing it, you're welcome, of course. So what we should acknowledge is that we all create a space for people to feel that they belong, you know. And this is something you have even more tools about. And so we will get into this even uh, further, like the human aspect of this but it's something we all understand. And uh, my background, as I said, is from a Norwegian festival called the Oya Festival, where I was based and uh, in, uh, ten, uh, for 10 years, I was building up the whole sustainability work of that, building into all of those processes, really uh, getting to understand where to start and how to start, but also to develop it. Um, I have my own company called uh, Greener Events and I've been a part of uh, creating several roadmaps for the Norwegian, uh, the Norwegian culture sector, the Nordic Council of Ministers and for the, Europe, uh, the European Interest Organization for Festivals. So um, I also work with a Norwegian uh, uh, environmental certification called uh, Miljøfyrtårn uh, Eco Lighthouse. Hello. So I want you to start thinking, although it's a bit uh, of things going on in the room, <laughs> uh, do you think that change is necessary? Start making your own notes, right? Take a couple of minutes, start taking some notes. Do you think that change, the green change, is necessary? or maybe you are already there, it's uh, okay. What is your motivation, right? Your personal motivation. If it's no, then you don't have a motivation. Maybe you have a motivation for not going for it, but it's good to be frank about it. And what are some barriers that you are thinking about? You were mentioning some that you see in the Norwegian society. So take two minutes to think about these things. All right. If you need paper and pencils, we have them. Just One more minute to take some notes. And now I want you to discuss it with the people next to you, maybe three or four in the group. You can uh, discuss it a bit for a, a few minutes. What do you think? Is, uh, is it necessary, yes or no? So this is uh, quick. You too? <laughs> what is your motivation? <laughs> What are barriers? I guess my sound is better. I will be recording when we speak together. 
right there it might feel painful but you will have uh, another shot in a, a couple of minutes to continue talking and planning and thinking uh, if you are, have thoughts or um, arguments you, that you didn't get out of your head you just take the time now to write it down all right so does anyone want to share about uh, uh, do you think the change is needed Do you think it's needed? Yes. Or is it okay? No, not okay. Not okay. So anyone want to share their motivation? I can share. Yeah, great. It's not my motivation, but in, in our group, I, I really like the thought that we cannot work with youth choirs while we destroy the future. So we have to always think about what we leave behind from our, our actions. Yeah, great. Yes, I am actually from environmental sciences and uh, I have been dealing with several projects regarding plastic pollution and uh, we have this very uh, nice sea festival in Klaipeda, which is our um, port city in Lithuania. You're, you're from Lithuania? I am from yeah. Lithuania and uh, then uh, we had a tour with our underwater camera uh, to see what's going on after the festival in the river and it's just uh, terrifying. Uh, bottles, cups, uh, bicycles, everything with, that you can imagine. And then, is it different before and after? Uh, I believe so. I mean, because the uh, sea festival takes place uh, really next to the river, so it's, it's there, and people are drunk and they just throw things. It's the same in Germany, it's, it's basically everywhere the same. Mm -hmm. And then the other point is that we are alive in so many levels, like, there's a picture of the song festival and some stuff thrown into the air. I don't know what's more important, the, this happiness of the human beings or our nature. Hmm. And, uh, but does it, does it have to be different things? It's just that you don't maybe need to throw those things exactly. in the air and, and you once, can do something Once else. I asked like a very known uh, organizer of festivals, like the balloons of three colors that represent our flag was just uh, released into the air and then I asked him but why and he said oh they are biodegradable but is it mm. yeah. I think yeah. it's just a pure lie and uh, I mean we did so, so your motivation is nature anyone else sorry <laughs> <laughs> I will be the interrupting person a bit annoying today I'm sorry yes anyone else want to share a motivation I think for me there are like different types of motivation. I have an internal motivation yeah. which really comes from wanting my nieces and nephews and their children to have a future. Yeah. Uh, but then there's partly also an external motivation, the European Union telling me that I have to be happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look yeah. at the next slide. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I think one of the things why I think it's necessary, I think we still like a lot of um, education, for example, about the production of things and what is that effect. So people kind of think it's biodegradable. Yeah. They don't think how long it takes and they don't think how much did it cost to produce this balloon and do I really need the balloon or not? Yeah. So do, yeah. I think I like to, do I need something to be happy or can't I be happy without it? Yeah. Good. Any barriers? You're a bit talking about some barriers here already. Mindset. Because, yeah, mindset is a barrier. You were talking about that as a yeah. barrier. Yeah. Yes. I think one of the main things is that, I mean, especially as organized international events, uh, for us it's important that people come together. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem when you have to fly places, yeah. you know. Um, but how do you, it's, what is more important? And, and mm -hmm. that is the, the, my biggest barrier and issues because I need, I, I don't want this to stop because yeah. it's important that we meet, that we have friends all over the world and that we know if something bad happens in one part of the world that we're still connected mm -hmm. um, as, as humans and you know what's going on in that part, you know? Yeah. So it's a, this, is, this is essential, but mm -hmm. we cannot do it without airplanes. Mm -hmm. And how to, what is more important? That's yeah. a barrier. Um, yeah, so 
I see what you're saying and I have some thoughts about that. I will come back to that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is that I will give you some context based on what you said because we have some limitations in our mindsets maybe, but then we also have the European Union just coming uh, after us with the fifth, uh, Fit for 55, try to say that fast, uh, uh, program with the European Green Deal. You all know it. I'm Norwegian, so we are not based in the EU, but we are the best to, uh, you know, adapt all of these regulations, even before Sweden, which is an EU country. So uh, this is going through the whole society, building a big uh, set of regulations, and some are already launched, some are launching, and you know the th uh, theology of uh, the decision making, so some things are taking its time. But one important thing is like the green claim regulations coming in. Do you know it? It's about banning saying it's sustainable or green or environmental. You have to have a third party certification to be able to do that. This means that you can't say that your event is sustainable. A lot of events do it already or that it's neutral or because they bought some credits. So this is all things that you have to mind. Uh, and there are also economic uh, incentives in this work and you have Sonia and the others working to uh, create different uh, programs and projects around this but the goal must be to include this in your process like you said. I think it's key what you said earlier and it's key uh, to create a sustainable cultural experience. This is the Nordic house on the Faroe Islands and uh, it was built a couple of years ago, you think? It was built in the 70s, 50 years ago. And it's amazing because the whole, um, uh, it's all uh, different Nordic uh, designers, architects and others, and it's um, still very much uh, repairable. <coughs> it's being uh, taken care of. And I think it's something we should mind so, uh, talking about the uh, mindset change and where to um, work with your process. Uh, where can you uh, consider the uh, sustainability? It's in your project management already, right? So you have to plan with it. Uh, it's in your budgeting. It's uh, in your communication and marketing. Always when you communicate, what can you uh, do to help your visitors your participants to, to travel um, um, uh, more sustainably and you have it in your own program. Like tell us if you don't come to the meals, try to take the train or bus if possible, but at the same time we have to acknowledge where we are at and some need to fly, right? So you have already this. It's around the arena, the venue, do they do what they, do they, do what they can do? Uh, it's all in the logistics and planning, already there, uh, in the waste management, of course, uh, in the catering, uh, in the booking, if you have artists coming in, like how do you plan, uh, sponsors or financial supporters are actually asking you to do this. Here's a new motivation from externals. I see this all the time that the sponsors and the, I'm also in a Norwegian foundation as a private foundation and we also are asking uh, for those receiving funds and we'll ask even more of them in the future because it's all according to the international regulations coming through the UN and the EU, right? So any other areas you see where we can consider it or take it into our because this is all about how we run our things, right? So I'm not getting into the cultural, like what songs to sing or uh, what we should present on of our stages, but that's also a part of this. We can make decisions. And this is just to tell you, you have a, a, already a strategy. You have already a plan. And so I can tell you more about it, but it tells you already what goes for all. What goes for your staff and crew? What goes for your events, what goes for um, um, 
yeah, engaging with uh, your audience. And it's got lots of questions you can use as kind of a guideline when developing. Right, Sonia? Yes. Yes. And awareness raising. Maybe awareness awareness raising. raising. Or can you use music to raise awareness for the problem? Yeah. Another document that exists, if you want to really nerd into this, is the European Green Festival Roadmap 2030, released by Europe earlier in June. But we showed it at Talent Music Week, where I met Kert. <laughs> yes? You can just Google it and find it, and it's in the Europe page. So if you take your notes, we can do that, but I would recommend you to just, um, uh, you have it so you can share it, but I would just find it now because you will not see your photos afterwards, right? Who, maybe some of you might go through your photos, but just find the page and have it. Make your notes now. So we, here we decided to tell about the problem statement. So here are some areas where you really have to address, and it's different in each country what kind of context you have. So you have to understand your own context. And uh, the absence of uniform sustainability strategies across all big sectors is a challenge. So then you at least have to try to make your own. Right? So I will not read this out loud, you will find it. But uh, it's there. And uh, we put actions into each chapter. So there are, cha um, there are a strategy chapter, an energy chapter, and it's all put in the sections where we saw the last IPCC report said these are the areas with the biggest emissions. So energy has the largest emissions in the world. It's of course because of coal. That kind of mix is different from each of our uh, power uh, uh, systems in each of our countries, but buying sustainable fuel is, uh, or um, um, power is important. Then it's uh, materials, food and beverage, travel and transport, water, and of course the community and biodiversity that you were talking about. So yeah, the yes, about energy, because as a German, it's a yeah. yeah, because we decided to shut down our um, Nuclear power stations mm -hmm. because we consider them dangerous, and yeah. now people are saying, Oh, well, that's clean energy, so you should actually start, start using them. Yeah, it's a big cultural thing. Is, um, yeah, because they have more, um, yeah, yeah. So, what's the what's the, what's the correct? Or, yeah, or what, <laughs> well, I don't know what I'm saying correct, but yeah, in the end, is it worse if a nuclear power station explodes one day because? Say, oh, we have all mm. waste, or mm. it's more important to look at the carbon footprint. That would yeah. be one of my barriers. Yeah, I understand that. And I, I mean, uh, I completely understand that. And that's a cultural thing, too, because you grew up knowing that this was bad. And now somebody says, actually, we did some science here, and it's actually not that bad because the, after d using this for so many years, we see that, uh, well, there can be things going on if it's. Um, not regulated in the right way. We, I guess we all have seen uh, the films, right, from Chernobyl and from uh, Fukushima. What happened, you know, th really unrealistic things happened and they can still occur. And then we have a big tragedy. So I would say, um, I mean, I'm not a scientist. It's a, it's a hard, uh, hard one. Uh, I, I myself work, uh, live in a country where we do not have it. And it's a big discussion to implement it as a, because we need more power, because we need to electrify our society when decarbonizing. Yes. In the, the previous uh, the slide, there was, uh, you, you said buying clean energy, but how can a non governmental organization, uh, I mean, we are all connected through, through cable, so mm. if I. You can be, buy a green certificate for your power. Okay. It costs. Yeah, it costs a few crowns extra, yeah. but it's uh, it's possible to do that. When you say a few crowns extra, yeah, it's on. The, it depends on which co company you have your. Uh, I, I understand the problem because you think it's the same energy coming out of the 
It's the same. It's the same. You are investing in the renewable energy. Yes. If you buy green, oh, right. you are investing so, in yeah. the renewable energy. Yeah. So actually, the energy that comes to your house is the same, but you are yeah. hmm. he helping the change. Yeah. 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 So this is a uh, Nordic uh, Green Roadmap for Cultural Institutions. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and that was launched just recently. And this is, I don't know how many of you are actually in a cultural house or running one. Nobody are having, uh, running a cultural institution or a... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you are all having your practices or meetings in a building, right? Mm -hmm. So you all are related so to some kind of institute, like we are in one now. So these can still be applied to you, and it's about how you can erase some w awareness. But, uh, this why. Uh, so we decided to uh, make a timeline. This is the roadmap, and it's about helping creating uh, uh, some plans and to add action points to all of the sections. So uh, this is nine steps towards a green transition. And this is where we are today. We need to work with our human resources and mandates. Maybe you don't have the mandate. Maybe you don't have the human resources. You have somebody in charge of the economy and in charge of the music but maybe you need to have somebody in charge of the sustainability as well as a part of the group or as a part of a role. Um, it needs to be in your context. So, and then uh, starting with assessments and analysis, looking at where and how you use your money, for instance, can be helpful. Uh, what you buy, you know? Uh, then uh, based on your assessments, Create an action plan. Look at your resource management again. See how you can use collaborations and partnerships, exchanging expertise and knowledge in spaces like this. Um, continue mentoring, but also reporting uh, and monitoring. Uh, so you have to co uh, continue to analyze and assess, but also get the expertise in. Uh, that can be done through different kinds of engagements, but uh, you have a, um, somebody in who, who has a, um, an education in this, so maybe that can be a topic as well for you to discuss. And then it's about uh, continuous improvement. Uh, so the thing I want to s now I will go through all of the areas. So put, uh, take up your notes and start taking notes. So you, I want you to make your own plan. Or if you have one already, you can think about how you want to improve it. So first of all, who is the plan for? We have different stakeholders. Is it for yourself? It, is it for your organization? Is it for somewhere where you are active? It's up to you. Uh, think about when I speak now, what do you want to stop with that you do already? But you don't want to continue doing it. Uh, what do you want to continue with that you are happy with? What is good? What, what are you doing already with which you are happy doing? And what do you want to start with? All right? So these are some questions for you to think about when I speak. So measuring, I was talking about that initially. And you can do that, like I said, through the accounting. Um, uh, one thing is how you buy things, how you budget, and um, maybe sometimes you buy other things than you budgeted for. Did you ever experience that? So make sure that you have a good plan and stick with it. Um, and sometimes you purchase things and you throw it away. That means that you pay for something that you buy and you pay for throwing it out normally, right? So that's not really economic. So do you really want to buy things that you throw away and pay for that? 
uh, talking about balloons or whatever, <laughs> it's the whole fifth print. And maybe, do you know what you give uh, away for free? And what is put in storage that you can reuse? So be a bit aware about what happens with things. Uh, how much food was left? And why is it left? I once threw away a thousand fish burgers because they were not sold. And somebody to, uh, turned off the cooling for them and left them there. <laughs> so, I mean, you have to plan and communicate and somebody needs to be in charge. Uh, with all of the technical equipment, sometimes you are asked to get lots of technical equipment, but you don't even use it. So it's unnecessary transportation and loading and so on. These are some areas. And do you calculate uh, your CO2 emissions? I know there are some links on where to use it, but uh, there's also a brilliant new Norwegian tool called uh, Green Producers Tool that is introduced to the whole of the Nordics and also Europe, which is speci specifically designed for the cultural sector. So. These are tools that, just examples. This is an example from a Norwegian festival where I conducted a um, very thorough um, um, a CO2 uh, uh, calculation. And what really surprised me was, one thing is that transport was about 50% of the total, but that food and beverage should be nearly 40%. I, was, I called the scientist to <laughs> plan the factors and said, I think there's a mistake. But it's actually because we sell a lot of alcohol or a lot of drinks. And beer has uh, an emission factor of one in this calculation. So it means if you have a large volume of drinks, it will be really high. But also, even though this food profile had uh, quite little red meat, uh, still the meat and cheese based dishes, although vegetarian cheese has the same emission as chicken and, beef and uh, pork. So it doesn't really help, <laughs> although it's local. Uh, energy here is easy to just take out uh, because of the equation because it's diesel power generators in a park where they have um, the possibility to connect to the grid, which in Oslo is green. Uh, all of the other are life cycle based and recycle and waste you see is only 3% of the total. Isn't this interesting? I found this very interesting when I was able to put all the numbers in before we just calculated maybe the transport, we calculated some others, and we see when we rent things how little it is because it's for such a small time. Uh, so energy is basically the most important thing, especially if you are based in a coal base. So what can you do? It's about the sources, right? But it's also to understand, sorry, I didn't translate this as a Norwegian, um, I realize. But uh, what's, what's your, what is your consumption without having your peaks on stage? So understanding, what do you spend uh, you are, how do you spend your uh, energy? Is it ventilation? Is it cooling? Is it some kind of equipment that is really energy consuming? Is it uh, lighting? What is it? You know, do you have, um, I have one venue that had a great bill, really large, and it was because of their outdoor heating. So is it something you want to spend your money on? You know, it's, maybe you have your electric cars being charged. That could be something or machinery. So the savings potential in a venue can be, I don't know, there's not that many that have venues, but it's actually turning things off when they're not being used, like fridges for uh, drinks will actually save you 20 to 30 percent, uh, our research project shows. Uh, and also here we see how little uh, the power grid consumes compared to the diesel generators. And it's also, this is a direct emission that you can just take out. Purchasing, I was talking about how you use your money. So it's about well-planned purchases and the use of your resources, but also 
considering not making unnecessary waste, and we already saw some examples of it, right? Sustainable food, it's about um, talking, uh, like ordering your uh, catering that is seasonal, that is plant-based, and <coughs> also thinking about minimizing uh, um, your food waste. Sorry, it's really hard to speak when you guys are speaking. Uh, and it can look and taste delicious. Also always have water uh, available, right? We saw that today. There was water, drinking water from the tap. That was cleaned, it's possible. It doesn't look really appetizing here, but it's okay. <laughs> And this is uh, uh, something I got from your report, which shows from uh, our world in data, what are the most emitting um, me, um, food. Can I ask a question about yeah. the cheese that always intrigues me? Is yeah. sheep cheese and goat cheese as bad as cow cheese? Or is that I don't have the exact details on this. Uh, it's because it's normally only said uh, cheese. Yeah. And I um, often, when I calculate this, it's based on halloumi cheese. Mm -hmm. Because that's uh, what you would have as a meat substitute. So um, it's not easy to say. I don't have that number. So what I said, beer and wine makes up a surprisingly high uh, rate of em emissions. But I can't go to festivals that are like running their economy on this and say you can't serve beer. But it's about going into dialogue with the brewery, but also um, looking into how you can reuse you, um, your resources in different ways. And uh, we are talking about sorting waste and so on, and that's actually something we have a bit as something exclusive. If we look into the map where municipal waste is recycled, it's not happening in most of the world. So it's actually something we are doing up here, which means that there are not really any operating systems around us. And sometimes we actually hear that our waste is being shipped off quite long distances, and it's not really being uh, uh, take it handled in the correct way. You know what I mean? So we are a bit in a our own bubble up here in Europe. Uh, but one thing is at least to have some systems collecting waste. I don't know if this makes sense to you. I just wanted to mention it. And uh, there are lots of uh, examples of this in different resources. I'm happy to share with you if you are needing it. Uh, thinking about single use versus multi-use is always better to clean things uh, if possible. There are also um, regulations of what kind of uh, pa food uh, packaging you can use, but single use um, can't be plastic anymore. Uh, but again, uh, this is an example of food waste. This is where Roskiller Festival, with a project called uh, Stop Wasting Food, salvaged 36 tons of food that was supposed to be thrown out after the festival, but it was still eatable, it was still um, it was uh, still possible to make new dishes of it that was then uh, frozen and uh, delivered to different food stations. So uh, also thinking about repairing and reuse. Uh, in the Oya Festival we bought a sewing machine and we made new things out of old banners for instance because it's got Durable. So we were making seats and chairs and all kinds of things. Uh, and there's also a great tool to uh, create your waste-free events. And uh, I'm not expecting you to do this, but this is from the Digital Festival in Amsterdam, where they made a material flow analysis. So they looked at everything they put in. You can do this in a minimum, like your own small little and saw what happened to it afterwards. I know the scientist enjoys charts like this. <laughs> so then you know, it means, yes, there will be waste, but it's waste to you and a resource for somebody else, understanding that. 
uh, here we saw that it's only 3% of the emission, but it's still something that is kind of a hygiene factor. People want you to take care and not create lots of plastic cups, for instance. So I'm very happy to have a cup, not a plastic cup. It's about the feeling you get. It's not always, you have to look at this in your own context and find solutions with your partners. Again, about transport, this is from a sporting event where they needed to have these athletes. You heard about Diamond League. They needed to have these athletes flying into Oslo. And, but they decided when we, they arrive in Norway, they have to be you know, zero emission. So when the uh, athletes arrived in the Oslo uh, airport, everybody was put in the airport express train. They lived next to the train station. They were taken to the trainings and electric cars. And uh, they had their own tram that took them from the hotel directly up to the arena. And all of the um, audience had in their tickets uh, a free travel for the whole day, a fare of travel. And then they moved on to the next event in Stockholm by train. So we were able to reduce the emissions by 39% doing that. And we know that we want to, <laughs> to cut 55% by 2030. So it wasn't big. Actually, it opened up to have more partners included and the economy was stronger afterwards. It was not a challenge. So we see uh, transport of people in this uh, section of the PIP Fest uh, example is 77% of the total, and we remember it was 50, the transport itself was 50 of the total of the emissions, so people transport is important. But you also see that of that number of transport of people, the aviation was nearly 90% of that number, and that's only uh, the artists, and they were few. They only had a few bands each day, three days, four or five bands each day. So the rest of the audience, uh, yeah, and then you can of course transport them with electric cars, but the rest of the audience actually, they uh, came to sites and walked, uh, and it's only 3.6% of the emissions from the audience. Normally you would hear that audience, oh, it's a big travel, as long as they, they, they don't come by aviation, as long as they don't come uh, with their own car, it's uh, easier to do something about these numbers. And making bike parking is a good idea. And also the community role, Sophie will talk more about this, but it's about setting the agenda and also inspire everybody around you. And you do that with your culture already. And it's about the message, how you concept it, how you make maybe campaigns. I know you didn't want it as a project, but it's about always speaking about it in some tone. And maybe including activists, because you, are, you have enough with what you are doing already. So have including partners, um, but still be a part of the debate if you need to in your own organizations in your country. Um, so here are from the, again, the Nordic uh, roadmap, some typical action points. It's about engaging with stakeholders. It's about promoting sustainable practices through positive collaboration. Um, and also how to map in the whole community, how you can play a part in this map. Uh, so how are things going with your plan? <laughs> I want you to go back to your groups uh, and um, just speak a bit about some things you want to start with, stop with and continue doing. You have nine minutes. <laughs> okay. Hello. I wish I could whistle. Do you know to whistle? <laughs> My dad was uh, a whistler. He was always he he was a farmer, and he could whistle really loudly, and the cows would come in. <laughs>
and he would also sing opera for them, but never to anyone else. They were. He was singing in the, in the choir though. Like, Okay, so are you did were you able to plan something or think about something or start a process? <laughs> Kinda. Of. Kinda is a good word. Yeah. <laughs> so I think if I w were to give you some points, I think the first step is to acknowledge. You have to kind of decide. This is something that we want to implement into the way we run things. And then you have to prioritize because it's overwhelming to go into all of those areas I was speaking about right now. So use the tools that I showed you or other tools that you already have in your own organization to start finding which points do I think is the most. But first of all, you need to measure. Because if you don't know what to start with or where, where does it make sense, then it doesn't really help. So look at how you spend your money, your energy, your transport budget. Those are the biggest areas. And if you need to fly, you can buy sustainable air fuel, which will reduce your emissions quite substantially. And it costs less than 30 euros to do it. For me, I think that's a meaningful investment coming here. So there's something like this green, oh sorry. Is this working the same way as the green electricity? Because yeah. I'm just saying that there's a lot of people that are not paying this, so there's actually an investment into the and just my, my personal carbon footprint doesn't change because I'm still in the same plane, but I can contribute. Yes. Energy. Okay. And remember that the EU Green Deal also goes for the flights. So they are made to reduce their emissions in all kinds of ways. And I saw you were writing a bit about this on there already. Taking direct short flights are better than having several ones. Uh, and uh, flying during the day is better than flying at night because the condense from the air flights does not map you, <laughs> but it does uh, heat the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And that's not a CO2 emission, but it's something else heating, which is worse. So it's about planning. Mm -hmm. And it's about not eating the whole elephant, but putting it into pieces. That works. <laughs> for you and your complex. <laughs> yeah. So uh, with that, I want to thank you for the sustainability talk. And I think in the long run, planning uh, helps you save also economic resources. Thank you. Um, in short, you need to conclude uh, whether sustainable events are more expensive or less expensive, if you plan it very well. I think if you don't, I, I think there are different um, experiences and how you calculate this. So for some, it will have an extra cost, for others, it will not. And you have to always include stakeholders. So have uh, new sources of financing. I also work with business development and sponsorship and so on. So you will be more attractive for a different kind of partnership maybe to get funds into some solutions that you're after. But it's, uh, for some it will be a big saving to plan like this. And for others, it will might it might be a higher cost, but it's all depending on the context. Yeah. It's a very good keyword because I wanted to actually say that we are considering in the next Ignite project from 2025 to offer Ignite grants for greening your events, mm -hmm. and it would be interesting for me to get a feedback from you until December if you think this is a good initiative. It won't be 20,000 euros; it might be 5,000, 6,000 euros. But, for example, when it comes to what dishes you use that mm -hmm. can have extra costs and that could be something, or having uh, waste separation can have extra costs. So if you know that 
this is something interesting feedback to me. And I think the other thing that I would like to say is we said this morning, where do you need training? Mm. Maybe after this um, short workshop, you know where you lack um, help or information, and you can concretely tell me, I would like to get training on carbon footprint measuring because I don't know how to start that. Or I would like to have uh, a, a workshop on because this is only the start. This is only our very first It's scratching the surface, basically. Yeah. Um, but we will have many more and should have more online and live workshops on this topic in the coming years. So please do think about that on your way home. It's yeah. online it's inspiration check cold play. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tour. Mm. It's amazing. They did a carbon neutral, I mean, how do you say it? You're not allowed to say that. Nothing is carbon neutral. I know, neutral. Yeah, I was trying to find the right way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they reduced their emissions yeah. quite substantially. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's inspiring. Yeah, great. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.